The artists are Fabian Winkler and uh, Daniel Souter. They've used a collection of tactical flashlights to create a very low resolution projection screen. So on the wall you're seeing these 96 flashlights. Each one is a point of light that's a very low resolution version of what's on the screen over here. And they're very much interested in the idea of uh, surveillance and uh, low quality information that's behind a lot of semi-automated decisions that are happening in terms of military and other kinds of uh, you know, group management or uh, crowd control. So if you think about something like a drone strike, we've all seen those video images that come from the airplanes. They're very, very grainy, very limited information, but you know, we're making life and death decisions based on that limited information. So they have a dancer performing what, uh, she was basically instructed to perform uh, suspicious movements, these asymmetrical uh, suspicious movements, and that's what's then being projected on the screen. Uh, the, it's interesting that the flashlights that are there are all Smith & Wesson flashlights, a nice, nice little detail if you get in there. Uh, where to next? We'll talk about this piece. Uh, Stratocaster is right next door. Um, the artist Joseph Farbrook. It's a, uh, a Second Life interface, but the navigational tool is actually a wheelchair. And so it kind of, uh, if, you, if you know much about Second Life and if you watch, people tend to have these, these glorified avatars. And you know, I've seen a lot of people who have, uh, you know, they sort of take on this idealized persona and in this case, it's actually kind of gone in the other direction. So you're sort of forced into an uncommon and often, uh, you know, what is a, a reduced social position in our society in a wheelchair. And that's your navigational tool in Second Life. Um, he's brought in a bunch of imagery. So the environment is, uh, as he talks about it, is sort of the, the cultural baggage that we bring in. Second Life has the potential to be anything we can visualize, but we tend to bring in, you know, our suburban homes and our SUVs. And so it's sort of a critique of that. We, we have all of this familiar material that we take into Second Life with us. Does that do it justice? Yeah, I just got here. There you go. All right. Well, it did it justice. <laughs> this is Joseph. He's the, uh, the artist. Uh, this piece here is called the uh, Cursor Caresser Eraser. Uh, Michael Flimowitz is uh, one of the artists. It's a uh, the screen has uh, layers of images of, uh, of the human body, and there's a tactile interface that you actually reach your hand inside of. To me, it kind of reminds me of the uh, that haunted house experience when you're told to stick your hand in the black box, and you, you know you're probably just interacting with lime jello. But in this case, you have a, a kind of uh, it's a, a urethane cast of body parts. So if you look in there, you'll see noses and ears and fingers and um, nothing nothing dirty, but you know it's body parts. And so as you feel your way around this interface, your touch is then actually erasing layers of information on the screen. And so you're basically creating and modifying the image as you work through. But there's a bit of a disconnect. And, and for the artist, that's intentional. So there isn't a, it's not a one-to-one -one interface. You don't just touch here and erase there. You're, you're kind of asked to explore this tactile environment at the same time you're sort of exploring the end result of the, uh, the visual environment that you're creating. Time for more? All right, we'll go on. This is a, a piece called Empire of Sleep, uh, AKA The Beach. Uh, it's a, a 3D projection. Uh, the artist is uh, Alan Price. I knew the first name. I've been talking with these guys on a first name basis all week. Um, so you put on the 3D glasses and you sort of step into this surreal environment of a, of a beach scene with these Kind of strange creatures, uh, but you have this navigational tool, which is an old Holga camera. So as you as you point the camera in the environment and take a picture, that then sort of pushes the environment out into the scene. So it's a sort of uh, you're sort of a visual tourist in this 3D environment. And as you point and shoot, then you direct the environment, and then different things will start to happen and unfold. Very much an experiential thing. It's kind of hard to explain, but you know, definitely take a look. I think. That we've just done a full round. I think we've skipped over a couple of pieces, but you know, I just kind of wanted to give you a quick introduction to some of the work. I'm more than happy to answer questions. And like I said, most of the artists are here. This oh, this one. OK. This piece, uh, we have it here only in video form. Uh, unfortunately, when it came down to it, the, uh, the physical work wasn't able to make it. But it's called Sampling Plong. And it's this uh, a very bizarre interface. But it, what I like about it is it, it has a 
you know, the, that classic hand as the navigational tool, but it's a projection on a bunch of these whizzing gizmos. So it has this very high-tech, low-tech feel. Um, you know, there's things inflating and things whirring and buzzing. Um, so, but it has this, you know, using that mouse interface, but with a, with a physical environment. I think we're used to seeing that just kind of on a screen, but here you're sort of mousing over these toys and objects and, and kind of selectively activating the sculpture a little piece at a time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate you all being here. And like I said, please let me know if you have questions or if there's any of the artists you'd like to talk to more, I'd be happy to introduce you.